Even if you've never opened up the Fusion page before, in 10 minutes, you're gonna be able to make this. And if you wanna follow along with this video, there is a link in the description to download all the assets and do that, follow along. Let's get into it. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and there are a couple different ways you could get into Fusion. One is you could have a piece of media here on your timeline, and then you can be over it with your playhead like this, and then just click on the Fusion page, and that totally works. The other way would be to right click in the media pool and select new Fusion composition, type in your duration and frame rate and hit create then you can double click on that composition to open it up in the fusion page either way works and we'll get you into fusion let's just go back to our timeline by double clicking on that making sure we're over it in the edit page and then clicking on fusion I have a time lapse of these stars over the mountains. That's gonna be a nice background for our logo animation. Oh, this is so exciting that you're diving into Fusion. We're about to learn some really simple techniques that you can use on any project. Impress your friends and family. This is the magical stuff. Talent is a pursued interest. In other words, anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. And this is no exception. Speaking of logos, let's import a logo. Let's go up to here where it says Fusion and go down to Import. And I'm going to select SVG because I have a logo that's an SVG. That's a scalable vector graphic. And I'll hit Open. It'll ask me the image size. 1920 by 1080 works fine. I'll hit OK. And now we have this little group of nodes that's added to our node graph. Now, if you've never used nodes, this is probably really confusing. Basically, what we're doing is making a flow chart of what we want to build in our composite here. Up here, we have our viewer. You Viewers also might look like this. If we hit this little button right here, there can be two viewers. And whichever node you want to view in the viewer, you can either just drag it up to the viewer like this, or you could hit one or two on the keyboard with the node selected to load it into the left viewer or the right viewer. That's kind of just a way to preview each node. By default, we have two nodes here. The first one is media in, and the last one is media out. And each node has one job. Media in's job is to grab the footage from the timeline, and media out's job is to render whatever we do in Fusion back to the timeline. And all the magic happens in between. So if we go up here to our toolbar, these are different nodes that we can just grab and drag into the flow. And I can just drag this blur node right in between the media in and media out. When this line turns blue, it'll go in between. I can shake this and make sure that it's actually actually connected and a node doesn't do anything unless it's connected in this main line here. So I can make this blur really blurry if it's connected, but if I hold shift and click and drag this out so it's not connected, look, the image isn't blurry anymore. It doesn't matter how much I mess with the blur, it's not connected. We're not running any image through this effect and so it's not affecting anything. That's why we always make sure that it's connected by shaking it. I'll just hit shift and click on this once because sometimes you can have a node sitting right on this line and it looks like it's connected, but it's not. Don't be like me, kids. You shake your nodes and you shake them often. There's just no reason not to. And then I can select this node and go over here to the inspector and I can adjust properties of the node. And as I do that, we see the result here in the viewer, as long as we're viewing either the node that we have selected or a node that's downstream from it. So now we have blurry footage. And if we're done with this and we like it, we can just go back to the edit page. We don't have to render anything out, anything like that. And then here on the edit page, we have our blurry footage. So it's working. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> So this is a really simple node graph. We can take any kind of effect like a blur or a color correction and just put it in between these two nodes. And as the flow runs through that effect, that node will affect the image. I'll just select this blur and hit backspace to take it off. But now we have our logo and we wanna put it over our background. We need a special node for that called a merge node, which we can grab from to the right of this second divider. And I'll just drag this down like this. And then whatever we wanna to connect to the foreground, we connect to the green input of the merge like this. So now we have our bird logo over our background. I'm going to close this first viewer here just by clicking this viewer button right here. And let's take this bird and scale it down. The best way to do that is to take a transform node, which looks like this, and drop it in between the logo and the merge like that. Again, we can wiggle it to make sure that it's connected. And with that transform selected, we can take the size down and whatever we run through that transform is going to be affected. So this is a great way to scale or rotate multiple different things in Fusion. All you have to do is run them through a transform. Let's add some text. This third icon over here is our text plus tool. I'll grab this and drag it down here to the left of my bird logo. And this time, instead of dragging a merge down here like this, I can actually just take the output, which is this little gray box and drag this on top of the little box 
box on my media in, and that will automatically make a merge node and connect this to the foreground. Now, the reason that we put this merge to the left of this merge is because we want this text to be under it. Fusion doesn't have layers. And so what we do is we build a series of merge nodes in order and each merge node has a background and a foreground. And so if I bring this up in our second viewer here, we have our background, which is our media in, and then our text goes over that, which is our foreground. And if I go up here to our inspector, we have this little switch. If I turn the switch on and off, that turns the node on and off. And a merge's job is to put a foreground, the green input, over the background, which is the yellow input. So we really have two layers here, the background and the foreground. To add a third layer, it goes down the line, and this merge is going to take this image right here, these first two layers, and then put another layer on top of it because we have the first two layers coming in here on the yellow input. And then the green input, we have the bird logo going over our text. Now it's a little bit hard to see that because the text is the same color, but if I were to make the text yellow, you see the text is behind the bird. So we want this text to be behind our bird. That's why we're merging it before the merge that merges the bird logo. Of course, now there's no text. Why is that? Well, if we select the text like this, and then we go over to the inspector, we can start typing K-I-N-G. And if I take this and just move this to the left, we'll see we have our text. Let's change the font. I'll use a font called Next Art, and I think I'll push the tracking up just a little bit, just to space that out. And we'll move this over to the left. There we go. And that's one side of our text. Let's rename this. I'll just hit F2 and type the name. And now we can just copy and paste this by hitting Control C, double clicking off and hitting Control V. And we'll rename this bird. And we'll type bird here. And now let's just take this bird and merge it over our king like this. So now we have these sort of grouped together before we put them over our main image. I'll just take this bird and put that this way like that. And that looks pretty good. Let's animate this a little bit. Let's take this text and have it reveal from behind the bird. I can do that by just grabbing whichever node I wanna animate and I'll move my time slider to wherever I want it to stop. So let's say maybe 20 frames in and then anything that has a little diamond next to it here, I can keyframe and animate. So if we switch over to layout here, I can go down to center and click this little diamond and that's going to save these numbers right here at 20 frames. So then I can move to frame zero and I'll just change these numbers either by clicking and dragging here or just grabbing this little widget here. And I'll just move this in to be past the middle part of the bird somewhere in there. So now if I rewind this and play it back, that word flies out like that. I don't want it to stop so suddenly, so I can open up the keyframes panel. This is where we can adjust all of our animation on sort of a little timeline. And if I click this little zoom to fit button, I can select this last keyframe here and hit F on the keyboard. And what that'll do is flatten out that keyframe, which means that it'll slow down before it stops. Something to mention is that I only see the node that I have selected because I have this option under these three dots selected that says show only tools. So if yours looks like this and it's all overwhelming, I definitely recommend going to these three dots and saying show only selected tools. So that just helps a lot of stuff. You can get a little better idea of what this looks like in the spline panel. If I just click on displacement here, we can see we have a graph of this movement and it kind of slows down before it gets to the top. And so when we hit F on a keyframe, it just flattens out this little handle. So it stops like that. We'll do the same thing for the bird. And I don't want this text to show up behind the bird. I want it to kind of reveal out of nothing. And so what we'll have to do is make a mask to hide the text as it goes behind the bird. So what I'll do is take one of these shapes here, like the rectangle, and drag that down next to king and connect it to the blue input. That's the mask input of a node. And when we do that, whatever node we connected this to is only going to do its job inside of the mask. So we're only going to type that king text inside of the mask. So I can just mask this like this. And now as king moves back behind the bird, it disappears because it's leaving the mask. Let's do a similar thing for the bird. I'll hit control C, double click off of this and hit control V, connect that to bird. And I'll select this rectangle mask and move this over like this. And now as I play this back, those come out of nothing. Nice. Now, one thing that's cool is we can use absolutely anything as a mask inside of Fusion. In fact, we could even use just this text, which if I hit one on the keyboard and bring that up here, I could use this text as a mask. So why don't we take, this is just some kind of pretty clouds, and let's actually disconnect this text from our merge and put this over our footage. So now we're just seeing these clouds, but we're gonna connect all this text and everything 
to the mask input of our media in two, which is that cloud footage. Look what happens. Now we get that text and we can see those clouds through that text. The reason this works is because we're actually using the transparency of this king bird layer. And wherever it's opaque, we're showing. And wherever it's clear, we're deleting the footage. So we're not really filling the text necessarily with these clouds. We're only drawing the clouds where the text is. And then the text is just invisible. Because anytime you connect something to this mask input, by default, you're using the transparency of whatever you're connecting and applying that to what you connected it to. So I could do the same thing with the bird logo. I could put this into media into like this. And now we have just the transparency of the bird logo controlling the transparency of these clouds. And that's kind of how the mask input works. So that's a really cool effect and so easy. And this is a pretty cool looking graphic, all made in Fusion and pretty simple, right? And what's cool about working with nodes is that you can see how this is built. You have this kind of flow chart and you can see exactly how this was made step by step. And of course, once we're done with our graphic, all we have to do is hit edit. And now we have our graphic here in the edit page. Let's just go ahead and trim this down just like we would any piece of footage. And now we have the intro to our movie. That looks awesome. Not too bad, right? If you're brand new to Fusion, let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. I want to meet you because I want to help you be amazing at it. There's a link in the description to download the assets for this project. I hope you have a great time. That's it. That's all. That's all I got for you. All right. Have a good day.